adventure. One summer day, Berry the Snail and Dolly the Ladybird found a colourful storybook. It was packed with pretty pictures of the sea swimming with fish and crabs. And there was another strange animal that Berry had never seen. It's called an octopus, but I've never seen a real one either. Why don't we go to the sea? Berry asked excitedly. But we don't know where the sea is, Berry. I know, let's ask Dr Owl. He knows everything. Do you know how to get to the sea, Dr Owl? You'll need to build a boat and sail down the stream. The stream will take you to the river and the river flows right into the sea. Berry and Dolly thanked Dr Owl for his advice and got to work right away. The three owl chicks happily helped them build their boat. The two friends jumped in. And the stream carried them all the way to the sea. Hooray! We're going to see the sea. The wind blew their boat down the stream and then the river. It wasn't long before the vast blue sea was right in front of them. We're here, yelled Barry. He pulled the boat to the shore and tied it to a palm tree. Come on, Dolly, let's dive to the bottom of the sea. The two friends saw all kinds of incredible creatures under the sea. They spotted a big crab and followed it to the surface. Excuse me, can you tell us where we can find a real octopus? Asked Dolly. Hold on to my pincers and I'll show you the little island where the octopus likes to sunbathe. The crab helped them to the island and swam away. The octopus was much bigger than they'd imagined and it frightened them. Berry and Dolly hid behind a big rock. Then the octopus had a good idea. It picked up some pebbles and started to juggle them with its eight tentacles. The little ladybird and the snail crept out from behind the rock. Come over here, the octopus said. I'll show you the prettiest pebbles on my island. Berry and Dolly quickly made friends with the octopus and they all had so much fun. It's time for us to go, said Dolly. Goodbye. It was very nice to meet you. Bye-bye, replied the octopus and gave them both a shiny pebble each. Berry and Dolly got into the boat and tried to paddle away. But it was too hard. Oh, dear Berry, we won't be able to manage. We'll have to get out of the boat. Dolly was really scared. See, Berry, I told you we shouldn't have sailed so far from home. I think you're right, Dolly. But then the stone started to move. Why are you so sad, little snail? The stone asked. This made Berry laugh. It wasn't a stone after all. It was a turtle. My friends, the rainbow fish, are about to begin their long journey. They'll swim up the stream all the way to the source. I'm sure they'd be happy to take you with them. Berry and Dolly said goodbye to the turtle and sat on the back of the captain fish. Then they all set off on their way home. By the time it was getting dark, the fish had reached the clearing where the ladybird's spotty house stood. Berry and Dolly thanked the fish for their help and they swam away. See, Dolly, all's well that ends well, the little snail said wisely. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? 
The Yellow Ladybird. The spring had come at last. Dolly decided it was time to tidy up her flower garden. She got her spade and a rake and tied a pretty dotted scarf around her head. She had only just stepped outside when she heard someone groaning behind her house. Christopher, your wing looks broken, the little ladybird exclaimed. The sun shone in my eyes and I flew straight into a tree. I really hurt myself, the canary said. Just then, Berry the snail and Stanley the stag beetle arrived. Stanley, please go and get Dr. Owl. Christopher's wing's broken, Dolly said, taking control. Dr. Owl soon arrived. Hmm, it looks like a very bad break, he said seriously. Then carefully and slowly he bandaged Christopher's broken wing. You know, Dolly, Christopher said one day, there's a little ladybird living on the island I come from. Really? Is she red with black dots like me? Dolly asked excitedly. And what's her name? She's called Katie. Her back isn't red, it's yellow, but her dots are black like yours. She looks a lot like you. Why don't you come to meet her when my wing's better? That sounds like a super idea. Can Berry come too? Of course he can. There's enough room for both of you on my back. A few days later, Dr. Owl came to visit the injured canary. He was happy to say that Christopher's wing was as good as new. The canary thanked the owl for his help, put Berry and Dolly on his back and headed for his island home. They soon found themselves flying over a large lake with a little island in the middle of the water. Can you see it? We're flying to that island. My nest is on top of the highest tree. Hold on tight, we're coming in to land. Christopher landed perfectly and Berry and Dolly climbed down. You can't catch me, shouted a bright beetle in an orange dress. She was talking to the tiny fleas running after her. Watch out, Dolly shouted, but the girl beetle ran right into her. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to knock you over. My name's Katie, who are you? Oh, you're Katie. We're here to see you. My name's Dolly and I've come a long way to meet my ladybird cousin. Ladybird cousin? Katie asked with a puzzled smile. Yes. You've got black dots just like me, except you're yellow instead of red. Wow, you're right, the yellow ladybird said. Come with me and I'll show you my house, Katie said. As soon as they saw Katie's house, Berry and Dolly started to laugh. My house looks exactly like this, but mine's red. Berry, Dolly and Katie took a long walk around the island. There's the pine forest with the little stream running next to it. We built the bridge ourselves, Katie explained with pride. And what's that in the middle of the meadow? It looks like a slide. That's right. It's a special flower slide. Come with me. I'll show you. Can I have a go? Of course you can. Follow me, Katie said and slid down on the curvy slide. Berry, Dolly and Katie slid down the slide again and again until it started to get dark. It's getting late. Come on, you two, I'll take you home, Christopher said. Dolly and Katie swapped headscarves as a parting present. Have a safe trip home, Katie told them. Do visit me again sometime. It was getting very late by the time Christopher arrived at Dolly's dotty house. The moon shone and the sky was full of sparkling stars. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Missing Nuts. Hello, Barry. Hurry up. Let's go and see Reggie Squirrel. We really should say goodbye to him before he hibernates for winter, Dolly the Ladybird said. Berry put on his hat, scarf and gloves 
and the two friends made their way to Reggie Squirrel's home. Their friend the squirrel was sitting on a branch in front of his home. We wanted to say goodbye before you snuggle up to sleep through the chilly winter. Why don't you come up for a glass of juice and a quick nut snack, Reggie suggested. Look at all the yummy food I've gathered for winter. My pantry's full. But the pantry was empty. Oh my, where have all my hazelnuts and walnuts gone? Where are my delicious pine cones, acorns and raisins? I think this might be where the nuts rolled out, Berry said, pointing to a little hole in the corner of the pantry. Someone's been chewing the tree trunk, Dolly said in surprise. And I think I know who it was, the little snail added. Don't worry, Reggie, we'll catch the troublemakers and find your nuts. And don't forget the pine cones and acorns too, the squirrel added. The two friends headed towards the big meadow. They heard loud laughter as they got closer. I knew it was them. They're always getting into some sort of trouble, Dolly whispered to Berry. I'm sure they're doing something naughty right now, Berry added. Someone chewed a hole in Reggie Squirrel's tree trunk right outside his pantry, and now all of his nuts are missing. It was you lot, wasn't it? But we didn't mean any harm. We were just chewing the bark like we always do, and we didn't know that his pantry was on the other side, the smallest bark beetle explained. What can we do to help? Come with us and we'll find the nuts that rolled away. We haven't got that much time. It could start to snow at any minute. We'll never be able to find his food in the snow, so hurry. They all took a close look at the tree trunk. The nuts all rolled out here and then they fell to the ground and carried on rolling down the hill, Reggie explained. The gang of friends found Reggie's goodies in a pile at the bottom of the hill. Hooray! Reggie shouted with delight. Would you please bring all the food back to my home while I patch the hole up in my pantry? Reggie told the bark beetles. They carefully placed the hazelnuts, walnuts and acorns back in his pantry. Berry and Dolly gave them a hand. They worked as fast as they could, but it got dark very quickly and they still had a huge stack left at the bottom of the hill. We'll never finish in time, one of the bark beetles sighed. We could really use some extra help, another added. Berry the snail suddenly sprang to his feet and left in a hurry without saying a word. He was soon back and had a trumpet in his hand. He blew it so loudly that everybody could hear it. Soon all the friends in the forest gathered. Dolly climbed up on a big boulder and told them all what had happened to Reggie Squirrel's winter food supply. All the nuts rolled out of the hole. We've got to take the food back to Reggie's home. If you all help, we can be done before dark. Ready, set, go, Berry said, and he lifted a nut from the pile. He gave it to Dolly. She handed it to one of the bark beetles. The bark beetle gave it to the bee. The bee handed it to the dragonfly. And so it moved back up the hill to the squirrel's pantry. By the time the moon appeared in the sky, all the hazelnuts, acorns, walnuts and chestnuts were safely stowed away in Reggie Squirrel's winter home. Reggie happily put the last nut back in his packed pantry. Thank you. I'm so glad I got so many good friends. It's time for me to tuck myself up in bed before it starts snowing. See you again in spring. The grateful squirrel yawned. Harry Hedgehog's Birthday One summer morning, Berry the Snail, Dolly the Ladybird and their forest friends were playing in the meadow. They were taking turns on the leaf swing. It must be so much fun to play on that swing. And it's a shame I'm too heavy for it, Harry Hedgehog sighed. His friends didn't know what to say. It's Harry Hedgehog's 10th birthday next week, the ladybird said. He'll be 10 years old, the little snail nodded. What do you think he'd like for his birthday? I know, Balthazar exclaimed and jumped to his feet. 
a swing. That's a super idea. Let's make a big swing for Harry, Dolly said enthusiastically. The little friends got to work immediately. They brought a saw, a hammer, nails and screws and searched for some strong branches. They tied the swing to thick wooden poles with very strong string. When the swing was ready, they all went to Balthazar's house to bake a cake. They cracked eggs and stirred the butter. The mixer whirred away and wooden spoons clattered in bowls. The little bee's kitchen was soon filled with delicious smells. They decorated the cake all over with cherries, raisins and walnuts. Let's put candles on it, Flutter said. Yes, ten candles, Dolly nodded. Let's write a letter to Harry, Berry said. Dear Harry, please come to Balthazar's house at lunchtime. We'll all see you there. Can you take it to Harry, please? Berry asked. But don't say a word about the cake and the swing, Dolly shouted after him. Balthazar and Stanley put the cake on a round table and carried it out of the house. The little ants were playing hide and seek and suddenly the smallest ant ran right into the table. <coughs> you tipped the table over! The cake's ruined! Balthazar moaned. The cake? What are we going to do now? Dolly sobbed. Harry Hedgehog will be here any minute and he won't have a cake. The little ants felt very sorry for what they'd done, but one of them had an idea. Let's gather lots of fruit and berries and build a big pile. It'll be almost like a cake, won't it? That's a good idea. Stanley said. I know Harry loves fruit. Mm. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar, Stanley and the little ants began to gather fruit in the forest. Eddie the potato beetle, Zephyr the dragonfly and Rosita the rose beetle helped them too. They soon had a very big pile indeed. Stanley stuck ten candles on top of the fruit, just seconds before Bubble arrived with Harry Hedgehog. Happy birthday, Harry! They all shouted. Wow, look at all that delicious fruit. My favourite. Thank you very much, the hedgehog exclaimed. We've got a surprise for you, Dolly said, and they led Harry to the swing. Harry was very surprised. What a big swing! Can I use it? He asked cheerfully. Yes, we built it for you. Hooray! Now I can swing too! Thank you so much! Then they stood around the fruit pile and began to eat. They ate and ate until nearly all the fruit was gone. They stuck the leftover apples and pears on Harry's spikes and he took them home to his mossy house. Harry went to bed with a happy smile and looked forward to tomorrow when he'd swing with his friends again. Today. The carnival. Winter was nearly over and the forest friends were sitting in Dolly's house. It's time we started getting ready for the carnival, Flutter the butterfly said. What are you going to dress up as? Berry asked. It's a secret, Flutter answered. You have to keep your costume a secret so that we can surprise each other at the carnival. You're right. Let's go home and get started. We've only got a few days left, Balthazar said. Berry quickly made up his mind. He decided to dress up as a mushroom. He used a white sheet for a cape and made a hat out of a red bowl. He painted white dots on the bowl. Dolly made a flower costume. She cut leaves out of green paper and sewed them on a green blanket. That was her dress and she made petals out of purple paper. Balthazar the bee and Betty the bumblebee worked together. 
Balthazar dressed up as a devil and Betty dressed up as an angel. Bubble the baby beetle sat in his hammock and started to make his lion costume. The lights were on in every home in the forest on the night before the carnival. Everybody was working on their costume and busy preparing for the celebrations the following day. Then the big day arrived. The forest friends decided to have the carnival at Stanley's house. They all worked hard and decorated the stag beetle's home with coloured streamers and balloons. While this was going on, Rosita the rose beetle was busy making delicious cakes at her house. Dolly, Leapy and Eddie the potato beetle all lent a hand. Then the time came for them all to put their costumes on. Stanley dressed up as a dice and waited for his friends. The first to arrive were Berry and Dolly. He was dressed as a mushroom and she was dressed as a flower. Then Balthazar came as a little devil and Betty as an angel, with Flutter in a crab costume. Leapy looked just like a cactus. Bubble was dressed as a lion, Eddie was a chef and Rosita was a bunch of grapes. Her dress was covered in shiny balloons. The firefly was dressed as a pencil and the flea was an octopus. Sam came as a soldier and one of the little ants was dressed up as a pancake. Suddenly Zephyr the dragonfly burst in crying. It's gone! My beautiful princess dress has disappeared! I washed it and I hung it out to dry but the wind blew it away! Zephyr sobbed and the others tried to comfort her. I don't need my soldier hat, I've got a sword, Sam Snail suggested. No, that's for boys! I had a lovely princess dress but the wind blew it away. We'll make you a new costume, Leapy said, a sun costume. Zephyr liked this idea very much. This yellow curtain will make a great cape, Dolly shouted. And these yellow pieces of paper can be the sun's rays, Stanley said, and took some of the streamers down. They cut, glued, sewed and stitched, and the beautiful sun costume was ready in no time. I can lend you my little lantern. The pencil doesn't really need a lantern, laughed the firefly. Thank you. Zephyr said. She was so happy, she blushed. The forest friends danced and sung all night and agreed Zephyr had the most special costume of all. As what could be more special than a sun that shone at night?